Hello my fellow City Skylines fans and welcome once again to Cold Snap, the city I'm building in my new let's play called Designing New Cities. This is what I've managed to create with my 9 to 5 new district. I'm going to show you quickly where we left off at episode 4 because as you know episode 5 was devoted to the spiral city and I'll show you that really quickly as well. As you can see here, this was the design I left off at episode 4. The second part of this video will be a time-lapse build of this entire district. And you will see that I have kept up with the original design. Now let us go over to the spiral city and see how that one is going. For those of you who are interested to see how the spiral city started and what was my original idea for it, you can check out the video that I'll be linking up here on the right and in the description below. But this is how far I've managed to get with the spiral city. You'll notice that I've expanded the spiral a few more times and I've also kept doing the underground roads in order to make sure that my service vehicles have a way to get back. So this way every one of these rings has an actual tunnel that leads the service vehicles back to the start so they can run their circle again. That way providing the vehicles with a way to go back to where they started and make sure that they can do their new run. Now in this spiral city I'm using the technique that I showed you in one of my previous videos telling you about how to zone properly and how to make good traffic flow. I'll link that episode right here on the screen and in the description below as well. This is where I show you to place these paths on these streets so this way you will zone on only one side of the street increasing your traffic flow by pretty much 100%. An additional fact is that when you create these small spaces here where you can get the paths in between these homes, you also increase the amount of space that these buildings have and then reduce the amount of traffic that's gonna be going along these streets. Now I am aware that that means that you'll be using space less efficiently, but when it comes to huge traffic jams, it's always a good idea to use that. Now because the game has been updated, there is no functioning traffic manager mode, as you can see that there is no icon for it here. So these streets are currently running at 40 speed, which means that these vehicles take a while to go through the spiral. But once the traffic mode has been updated and I can use it with the latest patch, I'll be again setting the 90 speed limit on these streets. So these vehicles will have an easier way going throughout the city at the 90 speed limit. Now because I don't wish to keep you too long, I'm going to go back to the cold snap city. As I have explained previously, I have stopped building up the 9 to 5 district here because I had already a lot of sims and I was starting to get unemployment. That is why I decided to leave this area here. Not all of the buildings have been built nor have they all upgraded which means that a lot more sims can move in here. Which is why I've added some of the offices to pick up on some of the workers. But here is where the fun starts and I'm calling it a tree design. Here I'm going to have my lumber industry. Now you'll notice something particular here. This is farmland, so how exactly am I planning to make this a lumber industry? Well, simply by planting trees. And if you didn't know this, I have a whole video dedicated to this. You can make your own lumber industry just by adding the trees manually and then placing the zoning for industry and a district which is marked for timber or lumber industry, however you wanna call it. So this way, if I place these trees, if I place the industry here, and if this district is marked for lumber production, I'll just enhance it a little bit, make it larger, and then mark it for forestry industry. I keep using lumber and timber, but it's forestry industry. And this way, any building that gets built here because of these trees is going to be able to be a forestry industry. Now, the thing is that you need a lot of trees and you also do not need to have every building be a collection for resources. You can have buildings which are going to produce something out of these trees. So remember, you have the products but you have the raw products as well even though they're not represented here when you go to the outside connections overview the fact is that here i have an interesting concept which i want to show you so i'm going to pause the game for now these two cargo train terminals are saying that they have no road access but they actually do it's just a small bug in the game when you use the highway ramps here next to them they can use them to get vehicles on and off it's just that this little sign is going to keep standing here. You can see this in my Bedrock Let's Play if you haven't seen it before. It's the city where I managed to go to 1 million population on the hard mode. And I'll put that here on the right as well and in the description below. Now the idea here is that this cargo train terminal is going to receive all the products that are going to be created here but marked for export. While this one is going to be marked for import. So if I take a look at my railway, just let me find it. You can see that I've used one way rail, which starts from here, goes to this railway depot, then that's where the import starts to happen, the vehicles get out here and go to these two rows. Now this one here is a one way two lane street, but these two are highway ramps. 
this one is providing the traffic with a way to get to the middle and this one just to the start. As for this cargo tank terminal, it's going to be the one that's gonna be getting the deliveries that are marked for export. This highway ramp going on the edge here is going to be bringing those trucks as well as this one way road here. As you can see, I made it so that this one way road here is going to be bringing in the traffic and this one up here is going to be leading the traffic down here to the exporting railway station. Now, as for the sims, they are going to have lots of access through these paths that I'll be placing here and some of them are going to be going up and above these highway ramps and some below. The point here is that the workers are going to be able to use these paths to get to these buildings and if necessary I will also make a bus line that is going to service these two areas and give the workers an easier way to get here. Maybe even a metro, we'll see what's necessary. As for the vehicles actually getting over here to my other industry areas, I'll have to make a tunnel exit perhaps here or somewhere else and we'll see how that goes. You should note that this area here isn't finished, this isn't how it's going to look like when it's completely finished, I still have a lot of trees, parks, some buildings to add and make sure that the traffic flows nicely. Now I did get some ugly results here with these two ways four lane roads because I had a problem connecting them properly and keeping the design. Now the design is sound when it goes up but the problem was adding these additional ones here on the edge so I had to make a rough idea of how to connect them and this may not be actually how it's going to be forever but currently it's going to work like this and if I see a problem I'm going to reconnect them somehow differently. But the underlying idea stays the same, people living here go to the right if they want to go up there to the industry and they use the left side to come back to their homes. Like I said, I'll add some public transportation as I see it necessary and considering that I now have the latest expansion, which I showed you an overview of, which uh, again I'll be linking up here on the right and in the description below, I can use the helicopters or the trolley buses and other kinds of transport that was added with that update. One more thing, I wish to give you an opportunity to name this, so name me please is going to be the name of this district for now and I wish you to give me names for this new lumber forestry industry district. I'm going to see if this design holds up and actually holds water as we say here and see if it's possible to have a good district here, building lots of products and exporting out or getting it to my generic industry which is over here. And mentioning the generic industry, I've managed to fill out this entire area with generic industry over here, while the agricultural industry has been finished pretty much everywhere. The spiral is actually what gave me the idea for the spiral city, and you can see if I go to speed 3 just how beautifully this all flows. There is pretty much no stoppages when it comes to traffic in the spiral, and that's why I got the idea for the spiral city to try and build a whole city as a spiral. Now there is sometimes a problem with garbage collection because it's a long road but as you can see the pickups do get made it just takes a little while longer but the traffic flow is so beautiful it's really mesmerizing to watch now i'm going to give you an opportunity to check out how this works in the next episode when i expand on my spiral city and also in the next episode i'm going to show you a lot more about the building of this district and finishing of this one i would like to thank you for watching and leave you with a nice shot of cold snap. After this you can watch the time lapse of building of 9 to 5 district.